Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening and welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 30th of May. India Pakistan begin 118th bilateral meeting on Indus Water Treaty. Nepal authorities recover bodies of 21 out of 22 people on board crashed aircraft. And locals in Gilgit Baltistan worried over environmental degradation due to CPEC project. And now for all the details. Two terrorists of proscribed terror outfit Jeshe Mohammed were killed in an overnight encounter with security forces in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Police said on Monday. Two AK rifles were recovered. The encounter began at Gundipura in Pulwama on Sunday night after security forces launched a cordon and search operation to track terrorists in the area. Kashmir Zone Inspector General of Police Vijay Kumar on Sunday night said two Jaisi Mohammed terrorists, including the killer of Constable Riaz Ahmed, were trapped in the encounter with security forces. Search was underway till the last reports came in. India blames Pakistan sponsored terrorism for creating unrest in the region a charge denied by Islamabad. This is the first time that the local police chief of the police army has been in the cordon. The cordon has been firing. The cordon has been in the cordon. 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 Well, rescue workers in Nepal have recovered the bodies of 21 people out of the 22 who were on board a small aircraft that crashed in a remote northwestern region, Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal said on Monday evening. Two Germans, four Indians and 16 Nepalese were aboard the aircraft, which crashed 15 minutes after taking off from the tourist town of Pokhara on Sunday morning. Nepal authorities on Monday recovered or located the bodies of all but one of 22 people who were on board a plane that crashed into a Himalayan mountainside on Sunday, officials said, and the government has formed a panel to investigate the incident. Two Germans, four Indians and 60 Nepalis were on the DHC-6300 twin auto aircraft, which crashed 15 minutes after taking off from the tourist town of Pokhara, 125 km west of capital Kathmandu on Sunday morning. Nepali soldiers and rescue workers had retrieved the bodies from their wreckage, strewn across a steep slope at an altitude of around 14,500 feet. The government said it has set up a five-member panel to determine the cause of the crash and suggest prevention measures for the future. The bodies will be flown to Kathmandu for post-mortem. Operated by privately owned Tara Air, the aircraft crashed in cloudy weather and the wreckage wasn't spotted until Monday morning by Nepal's army. The plane was headed to Jomsom, a popular tourist and pilgrimage site that lies about 80 km northwest of Pokhara, usually a 20-minute flight. But the aircraft lost control with the Pokhara control tower five minutes before it was due to land, airlines officials said. Air accidents are not uncommon in Nepal, home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains, including Everest, as the weather can change suddenly and make for hazardous conditions. Moving on, India and Pakistan began their 118th bilateral meeting on Indus Water Treaty in New Delhi on Monday. The talks are the latest in both countries' efforts to re-engage after Shehbaz Sharif was elected as Pakistan's Prime Minister in April. During the two-day meeting, both sides will deliberate on the issue of advanced flood information and the annual report of the Permanent Commission of Indus Waters. Earlier, both countries held three-day talks in Islamabad in March 2022. Pakistan is also concerned that India's plans for hydroelectric plants in its Kashmir Valley will damage the flow of Indus River, which feeds 80% of its irrigated agriculture along with tributaries. India has defended the construction of Pakal Dal and Lower Kalnai dams, saying they are allowed by the Indus Water Treaty brokered by the World Bank. 
And moving on, locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have blamed as part of China-Pakistan economic corridor, both China and Pakistan are indiscriminately exploiting the natural resources in the region, which is leading to environmental degradation. Gilgit, Baltistan has seen rapid melting of glaciers recently. Residents have lamented authorities have failed to stop deforestation and introduce policies to mitigate the effects of natural calamities. Glaciers in Giza and other parts of Gilgit Baltistan have begun to melt as temperature is rising due to an unprecedented heat wave causing significant rise in the water levels of rivers and streams. As a result, the threat of floods in the illegally occupied region looms large causing a state of panic among the locals. Residents have claimed as part of the ongoing construction of CPEC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, both China and Pakistan are rampantly exploiting the natural resources of ecologically fragile area with no policies in place to curb deforestation and mitigate the effects of natural calamities and they are left to brace the hazardous consequences. We have seen that the Arab project is coming from CPEC, which is coming from Chitra Road. यहाँ पर भी बदकस्मती से इसके ऊपर गौर नहीं किया गया यहाँ पर दरख्त लगाने होते हैं कि हुकूमत ये बताए कि इस प्रोजेक्ट के बाद जो है ना जब यहाँ पर ट्रैफिक चलेगी जब यहाँ पर बहुत ज़्यादा मूवमेंट होगी तो उसका लामोहाल तौर पर उसके असरा फिर माहौलियात के ऊपर पड़ेंगे Earlier this month, a bridge reportedly built by China in Hunza Valley collapsed after a glacial lake outburst. Locals blame that Pakistan government has paid little attention to their pressing problems over the years. They claim that although the Pakistan government called the CPEC a game changer to boost the economy, the project has only brought destruction and they are only facing bigger losses. And Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe in a special address to the nation on Sunday said the 21st Amendment to the Constitution that is expected to annul the 20th Amendment which gave unlimited powers to the President will be passed soon and the Parliament will be strengthened. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe said on Sunday his government was working to make the President and the Cabinet accountable to Parliament. after weeks of street protests triggered by the country's worst economic crisis in decades vikramasinghe said his government has proposed enacting laws to give parliament more power adding that over a dozen independent committees would be set up for parliamentary oversight and supervision of financial matters the prime minister batted for the 21st amendment to the constitution saying it will curb the president's unlimited powers The proposal could take several weeks to be approved as it needs to be accepted by the cabinet and the supreme court after which the parliament's approval will be sought. Opposition leaders had accused the Rajpaksa government of disproportionately increasing presidential powers and diluting the role of the parliament in law making. Meanwhile as protests demanding Rajpaksa's resignation continue, medical students from universities across the country clashed with police on Saturday. as they tried to break down barriers near the official residence of president police responded by firing water cannon and tear gas on sunday hundreds of people held a bicycle parade in the capital colombo riding to the permanent protest site opposite president's office demanding that gotabaya resign and parliament pass laws to remove the executive presidency sri lanka is reeling under its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948 with a severe shortage of foreign exchange severely curtailing imports including essentials such as fuel and medicines Well, record-setting female mountaineers Purnima Shreshta from Nepal and Kristin Harila from Norway on Sunday arrived at Tribhuvan International Airport in Kathmandu to a rousing welcome. Both the climbers created history this month after successfully climbing six mountains above 8,000 meters height, and they now aim to climb all the 14 peaks. Kristin also set a world record, becoming the fastest woman to climb the Mount Everest and Mount Lhotse in less than 12 hours. Photojournalist by profession, Purnima has already climbed world's tallest peak, Mount Everest, Mount Manaslu, and the Annapurna. She became one of the two women from Nepal to stand atop the Mount Dolagiri in the year 2021. Hundreds of climbers flock each year to Nepal to scale Himalayan peaks during the spring season that begins around March and ends in June. Thank you so much.
अनि अब मेरो लागि यो एकदम सरप्राइज नै हो मेरो किनभने डिफरेंट प्रोफेसनमा बाट आगो हो यो माउन्टेन चाहिँ मेरो थिएन हैन त्यही भएर पनि मलाई चाहिँ एकदमै मेरो आफ्नो लाइफमा मेरो आफ्नो एकदम ठुलो उपलब्धि हो मेरो जीवनकै a noted Punjabi singer Sidhu Musewala was shot dead in a suspected inter-gang rivalry near his ancestral village in India's Punjab state on Sunday. The incident happened within 24 hours after his security was withdrawn by the state government. Punjab's chief minister has ordered a judicial inquiry into the incident. Popular Indian Punjabi singer turned politician Shubdeep Singh Sidhu, popularly known as Sidhu Musewala, was shot dead in a suspected inter gang rivalry in India's northern Punjab state on Sunday evening. He was 28. Director General of Punjab Police VK Bhavra had said on Sunday that a Canada based gangster had claimed responsibility for the attack. But Sidhu Musewala's family demanded an apology from the police chief for linking the death to gang rivalry without a proper investigation. On Monday, Punjab's chief minister Bhagwant Maan asked Bhavra to issue a clarification over his statements and ordered an inquiry led by a high court judge into the incident. The murder has sparked a political storm as opposition leaders caution the state government's move to scale down Sidhu's security just a day before. ये भी मांग किया कि जिन लोगों ने security वापस ली, क्यों ली? जब उन्हें threat perception था और क्यों उन लोगों ने ये publicly किया कि हमने हमने security वापस ले ली है, जबकि कानून में इसको इसको गुना माना जा रहा, गुना मानते हैं, तो उनके ऊपर कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए. Many celebrities, including Canadian rapper Drake. And Bollywood actors and musicians took to social media to mourn Sidhu's death. Musewala won the Best Lyricist Award at the British Asia TV Music Awards in 2017 for his rap song So High. The violence comes more than three months after the state elections on February 14. The singer made his political debut in 2021 when he joined Congress, which is the main opposition party in India. And hundreds of devout Hindus across India took holy dip in sacred rivers and offered prayers on Monday to mark the auspicious occasion of Somvati Amavasya, also known as No Moon Monday. They believe that a holy dip on this day washes away all sins and sorrows. Scores of devotees took a holy dip in River Ganges and offered prayers in India's northern Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand states on Monday on the occasion of Somvati Amavasya, also known as No Moon Monday. It is believed that the holy dip on this day washes away all the sorrows and helps in progressing in life. People pray to the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, and perform any rituals on the occasion. River banks teemed with devotees as they waited for their turns to plunge in the Ganges to wash away lifetimes of sins and pray for the happiness of their departed ancestors. This festival is also significant for married women who take a dip in the Ganges and fast and pray for the long lives of their husbands. तो हम लोग को ऐसा लगता है गंगा आज सुमती वहां से को नहा लिया और दान पुण्य यहां पे आके कर लिया तो बहुत पुण्य प्राप्त कर लिया है मीनवाइल इन सेंट्रल मध्य प्रदेश स्टेट थाउजेंड्स ऑफ डेवटीज आल्सो टुक अ होली डिप इन शिप्रा रिवर ऑन द ओकेशन एंड पेड ओबिसेंस एट वेरियस टेंपल्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द हिंदू एपिक ऑफ महाभारत भीष्म सन ऑफ रिवर गैंजस नरेटेड द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ सोमवती अमावस्या टू युधिष्ठिर द एल्डेस्ट ऑफ द फाइव पांडव ब्रदर्स Bhishma said that whoever takes a bath in the sacred rivers on this day would be prosperous, disease-free and free from grief and sorrow. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.